please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. And our top focus this evening, the battle for Gujarat has intensified as all leaders of parties uh, enter the last wave of campaigning in the state. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he's addressed crowds in Morbi and Prachi today. He will continue the campaign in Saurashtra as well as South Gujarat. Uh, in his speech, the Prime Minister attacked the Congress for not contributing enough to development of Vikas in Gujarat. Uh, Rahul Gandhi, meanwhile, will begin his eighth Navsarjan Yatra from the Somnath Temple. He will also hold public meetings in Amreli as well as Bhavnagar districts during his two-day visit to the state. Now, earlier today, Rahul Gandhi had attacked the Prime Minister in a tweet saying how Prime Minister Modi has failed on his promise of building 50 lakh homes in Gujarat. And uh, meanwhile, PAS leader Hardik Patel has also addressed farmers in Morbi and will continue his Chai Pe Charcha as well as his Chok Pe Charcha campaigns in the state. I have a Gujarat model. I have a Vikas model. I have a hand pump. अने गुजरात नो विकास नो मॉडल रेटले नर्मदा ना पाइपलाइन नी सावनी योजना अब फर्क खबर पड़े जे जिन मुद्दों पर चर्चा होनी चाहिए गुजरात के विकास के ऊपर शिक्षा चिकित्सा स्कूल किसान के जो हालात हैं आत्महत्याएं हो रही हैं महिलाओं का दलितों का बैकवर्ड का उन पर चर्चा ना कर कर भाजपा के नेता � देश और दुनिया में बाकी इश्यूज जो हैं उसको गुजरात में लाके चर्चा करते हैं ताकि इन मुद्दों के बारे में जनता सवाल ना पूछे। Right, so in a little more than a week, Gujarat goes to the polls. So while political commentary and rhetoric is high, CNBC TV18 has been tracking the mood on the ground as part of our special series election caravan. So uh, for the near 15,000 crore rupee chemical industry, that's what we'll focus on uh, today, which is in Ahmedabad. So exporters of chemicals and dyes are still awaiting their GST refunds, and that impact has led to companies uh, deferring their salaries and orders seeing a drastic fall. Archana Shukla reports. आपका यूनिट जो है वो इंटरली एक्सपोर्ट ओरिएंटेड यूनिट है जिसको अभी जो है वो एक्सेम्प्ट कर दिया गया है टैक्सेशन पे तो इस बदलाव से जब जीएसटी लगा और उसके बाद अभी एक्सेम्प्ट हो गए हैं रिलीफ है या अभी भी आपको लगता है कि कुछ इश्यूज हैं वो रिलीफ आने में टाइम इसलिए लगेगा कि जो पांच महीने में इश्यूज आ चुके हैं डी पेन विच हैज बीन एक्यूमुलेटेड सिंस लास्ट फाइव मंथ्स हैज टू बी रिलीव्ड इन नेक्स्ट फ्यू मंथ्स when those turnover would be in the system at that time you would feel it okay now it has been capital ki agar baat kare hai to kis tarah se manage kar rahe hai kya bahut impact pada hai gst ka working capital bahut jada impact pada hai we are borrowing the money from the outside right now aur manne main usse sabse jada humara jo main basic agar hum log kahenge to humara production 40% abhi hum log leh pa rahe hai reason is that aur the biggest reason is that we are not able to pay the salary in time अच्छा हाँ that is the biggest impact in our company salary तक बात आ गई है अभी इतना आपका capital का issue हो गया है तो पूरे staff को salary नहीं मिली है कि नहीं हम लोगों ने मैंने एक लाख से नीचे वालों को सबको दे दी है उसके ऊपर वालों को नहीं दे पाए अभी तक अच्छा कब तक आपको लगता है आप इस चीज को manage कर पाएंगे दो तीन महीना लग जाए दो तीन महीना पूरा regularize होगा entire बाकी सब जगह पर फोकस तो कर ही नहीं पाएं। आप तो फिर भी एक बड़े यूनिट हैं। किस तरह का इम्पैक्ट छोटे यूनिट्स पे पड़ा होगा? छोटे यूनिट्स में तो यूज़ुअली दे हैव शटडाउन। शटडाउन मींस उन्होंने प्रोडक्शन बंद कर दिया है। उनके लिए इतनी प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती है क्योंकि देर आर स्मॉल न so they could cope with the system, but when we are not big, not small in the medium, those get too much affected. And shifting focus to the Padmavati row, which is far from over. So Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan today defied the Supreme Court order, saying the ban on the film will continue uh, in that state at least, as it has hurt public sentiment. Now this comes a day after the apex court had dismissed a plea for banning the movie. Uh, the Supreme Court had rebuked chief ministers of certain states, including Madhya Pradesh, asking how people holding public office could make statements on a movie that has not been certified by the CBFC yet. हमने जो कहा है उसको दोहराने की आवश्यकता नहीं है 
अगर इतिहास से संबंधित कोई ऐसा पात्र जिसको सारा देश सम्मान और आदर की दृष्टि से देखता है और उस पर अगर कोई फिल्म बनती है तो जन भावनाओं का ध्यान रखा जाना और आस्थाओं का श्रद्धा का ध्यान रखा जाना आवश्यक है an important news from the policy space so a financial resolution and deposit insurance bill that is currently being studied by a parliamentary committee is generating fear among depositors now depositors fear that their deposits with banks are both public as well as private are not safe except to the extent that they are insured lata venkatesh joins us now uh, lata can you take us through the contours of the bill and tell us exactly why uh, depositors are uh, slightly worried at this moment yeah. Well, the bill actually is at the moment in Parliament uh, has been assigned to a parliamentary committee. It's called the Financial Resolution and Deposit Insurance uh, Bill. Uh, the parliamentary committee is due to submit it probably in the winter session, and uh, maybe in the winter session itself it will be taken up, or maybe in the next uh, session. But basically, what does it do? Uh, as the uh, uh, you know the FSLRC committee had uh, uh, d uh, recommended, it is going to set up. a resolution corporation which will swing into action when a bank or a financial institution fails when there is a run on a bank or on an insurance and what is the provision that uh, everybody is worried about this word called bail in that you know normally you bail out when a bank is uh, uh, in trouble the government or the taxpayers money is put in this is a bail in that is the money that is already there with uh, the bank that will be used now what is the order of priority they will use first of course the 81 bonds what you call additional tier 1 bonds uh, the sex subordinated bonds all those guys who issue those bonds will be told wait we can't pay this bank is in trouble we are not going to pay you the next set and that is the troubling part that the banks depositors will also be told we are going to use part of your money and convert it into share capital so that the bank continues to exist and if the bank exists at some point in time it will be able to pay you back so what are the deposits it cannot use those that are insured even today 1 lakh of our deposits each individual not account ha huh? you may have many accounts in a bank but one person gets only 1 lakh insured and that money will be safe the remaining money could be used for instance the bank could take it and give you preference shares in exchange it will all depend on what is the resolution that the resolution corporation hammers out so uh, who what is safe deposits which are insured obligations to a counterparty like for instance to a stock exchange uh, where the bank is acting as uh, merely uh, you know uh, one of the uh, banks arranging finance those it cannot touch as well uh, say uh, employees uh, uh, dues uh, those are the things that the, that are safe everything else can be used by the bank in trouble for capital depending on the uh, solution hammered out by the resolution corporation now should depositors be worried the point is even today only 1 lakh of deposits are insured but what happened when private banks forget public sector banks that of course everything is underwritten by the government public sector uh, for private banks the government doesn't underwrite anything but when global trust bank failed uh, the reserve bank ensured that it will be merged with uh, oriental bank of commerce united western bank got merged with idbi bank sangli bank was in trouble got merged with icici bank uh, more lately bank of rajasthan was asked to merge into icici bank so until now the government and the reserve bank have never allowed depositors to suffer and why here in the capital uh, of capitalism in england when uh, northern rock was in trouble the bank of england uh, ensured that all deposits are saved by the taxpayers money so even if the law when the new law comes it says that you know deposits can be taken considering that india is a completely a bank driven economy i doubt any government will have the guts to tell a depositor to take a walk i think this fear is a little exaggerated right absolutely lata thanks so much for joining us with all the details from there so there you have it uh, historically banks have safeguarded deposit and uh, that is likely to continue on that note we'll slip into a short break but coming up on the other side the road ministry has given an in principle approval to quadricycles we'll bring you more details on the other side
Welcome back. You're still with us on Reporters Diary. Now, more than five years after it was formally unveiled, Bajaj Auto's quadricycle may finally hit the road soon. Sources are telling CNBC TV18 that the road ministry has given an in principle nod to the quadricycle. Ronan Joy Banerjee is here with all the details. He's been tracking that story for a while. Uh, Ron, so uh, what's the timeline that we're looking at now? Well, the in principle nod here essentially means that the roads ministry have they have now issued a draft notification that was put out on the 24th of November, and they've given various stakeholders a month's time. That is till the December 24th to give their comments, and thereafter, uh, you know, the expectations are that by January the final notification is going to come. And let me just take you through the sequence of events. Remember, it was uh, it was around August uh, 2013 when a similar uh, draft notification was issued, and thereafter in February 2014 a final notification was also issued. But the reason why Bajaj Auto could not go ahead and launch their quadricycle cute was because it ran into several PILs that were pretty much filed across the country. And the issues and the concerns raised by the PILs, you know, range from safety, from emission, uh, you know, to the fact that why does India even need a quadricycle when there are two wheelers, three wheelers, and passenger cars? Lately, the central issue was the fact that, remember, because this notification was issued uh, back then in February 2014, when India largely was still a BS3 compliant market, similarly, the notification was for a BS3 compliant quadricycle. But as we all know, India has now moved to BS4. Uh, that is why the Roads Ministry has now issued a, a notification for a quadricycle that is BS4 compliant. As you rightly said, this will pave the way for Bajaj Auto. They're already exporting it to over 20 countries with this notification, final notification, which should come uh, in January. Bajaj Auto can now go ahead and get the ARAI test and approval and be ready when that final approval is, uh, is made by the government. Right, Ron. Thanks so much for bringing us all the details from there. But shifting focus to uh, the insurance space where regulator IRDA is meeting today to discuss several issues. So on top of the agenda is a proposal that may allow private equity players to invest more than 10% in insurance companies. But that comes with a catch that their money will be locked in for a period of five years. Yash Jen, who has been tracking those developments, uh, joins us now with all the details. Yash, uh, so what's on the agenda? Well, as you rightly pointed out, the all-important insurance regulator IRDA's board meeting is currently underway. And the most important point on the agenda is to allow private equity players to invest over 10% in the Indian insurance companies. Now, remember, private equity players currently are only allowed to invest up to 10%, which also does not give them the promoter status. Uh, now, of course, any change in this particular threshold, a raise in this particular threshold, the regulator expects will get more participation from the private equity space in the Indian insurance market. But we are also given to understand that this raise in threshold of uh, over 10% investment in the in Indian insurance companies comes uh, with certain riders. The most important out of them is that this will be subjected to a five-year lock-in period. Also, what we're given to understand is that the chairman of this new company will have to be an independent person and he cannot represent any shareholder on the company. Also, one very important point is that the funds which are routed uh, through private equity players will have to come in from an SPV or a special purpose vehicle. So that is as far as the investment pattern is concerned. Apart from that, in terms of business approvals, we are given to understand that Reliance Health Insurance, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Reliance Capital, is likely to get its second level approval from IRDA in today's meeting. Remember, there is one more approval which will be required by the company before it starts its business operations. Apart from Reliance Health, two more standalone health insurance companies, namely Jiva Health and Oker Health Insurance, are also expected to get their first approval. So essentially, two more approvals for them to start their business business operations. Right, Yash. Thanks so much for joining us with all the details from there. On that note, we'll slip into another short break, but coming up on the other side, cryptocurrency Bitcoin has galloped past the $10,000 mark, going on to touch 11000 in fact. We'll bring you all the details of that remarkable rally on the other side. Welcome back. You're still with us in Reporters Diary. Let's bring you the big international story. So North Korea launched an intercontinental ballistic missile last night that flew 2,800 miles high. Now, that is about 10 times higher than the International Space Station or where the International Space Station orbits. Now, the missile went on to land in Japanese waters upon return. Now, South Korea, uh, South Korea has responded by carrying out live fire drills, launching one of its own ballistic missiles. NBC News' uh, Richard Engel filed this report for us. North Korea fired one of its biggest and most controversial missiles today, similar to this one intelligence officials believe launched last September, an intercontinental ballistic missile, which, in theory, can reach the continental U.S. But not the way North Korea fired this one. It went almost straight up, 
peaking, the South Korean military said, at an altitude of nearly 3,000 miles, traveling a distance of just 600 miles until it crashed off the Japanese coast, causing no damage. And President so Trump often criticized for his provocative and at times threatening rhetoric, today kept his cards close. It is a situation that we will handle. Defense Secretary Mattis added a little more detail. Uh, it went higher, frankly, than any previous shot they've taken. Why now? Political payback, perhaps. President Trump threatened the North Korean regime while in South Korea earlier this month. The president followed up with a tweet saying he'd never call Kim Jong-un short or fat. Kim Jong-un was in no position to respond. The U.S. had three aircraft carrier strike groups nearby. Now, all but one of the carriers has left. And we may be entering a new cycle of escalation. In Hawaii today, officials let reporters listen to the state's new attack warning siren. Starting in December, it will be tested every month. A possibility of attack today is very remote, but we do believe that it's important that we be proactive. Right, so continued pressure from North Korea on the international community. But uh, will they or won't they? That's the dilemma for investors as the I, the crucial OPEC and non-OPEC oil producers meeting. So investors are concerned that Russia could end the plans to extend a deal to increase output cuts to the production of oil. Now, CNBC Steve Sedgwick is in Vienna and he filed this report. Very interesting meeting as ever, because if we take a step back, they've actually had a very, very good year, haven't they? The policy which came in pretty much one year ago to the day has worked beautifully. They've got the oil prices up significantly over 30 percent. They've got a six handle on the overall price of the worldwide marker, which is Brent, and they're very happy with things as they are. But are storm clouds brewing because of dissension in the ranks between Russia and OPEC, dissension perhaps on how to fight the threat? Threat of shale going forward. Now, a couple of weeks ago, the oil price hit recent highs on hopes that a done deal for the rest of 2018, i.e. an extension of the current cuts of 1.8 million barrels a day, was in the bag. And as you just mentioned, the last couple of days, just a little bit of erosion in price because of concerns. It's all about message management as well. It's one thing saying we're going to do X, but it's another thing convincing the market that there is conviction behind it as well. So not only do they need to say to the market, look, we're, we're there. We're there for the long term. We're there till we get rid of this excess inventory entry that was the, the whole raison d'etre in the first place. But we're not seeing any wavering in the ranks. And if the market doesn't get a very strong message on that latter point, then of course we see, could see a continuation of the sell-off because there are some vested interests in some of these countries, including the big oil majors within Russia, the likes of Rozhnev, the likes of Look Oil, who actually want to abandon this deal and go head-to-head -head with shale again because they see shale, importantly, taking market share in key areas like China. Thanks, Steve, for joining us with all the details from there. But more, moving on to the big international story. So one Bitcoin is now worth more than $10,000. You heard that, right? In fact, uh, closing in on $11,000. So Bitcoin, which was trading a below a... Uh, $1,000 at the start of this year has scaled Mount 10,000 this morning and peaked uh, even further to $11,000 like we mentioned. So it's been a blockbuster run for the cryptocurrency which was trading at uh, lower than $1,000 at the start of the year. In fact, uh, one person who bought uh, Bitcoins worth $26 in uh, 2009 uh, now has a value of $980,000. Manisha joins us now with all, uh, the details from there. So Manisha, it seems like the gold rush is on. Oh, well, and what baffling numbers you just came out with. Exactly that. It has been a huge, humongous, phenomenal run-up that we have seen come in for this asset class. Actually, in this year itself, you have seen 900% and plus more of gains come in for this space. As you said, the market cap for Bitcoin alone is at $170 billion. And when you look at the overall cryptocurrency markets, well, it has crossed more than $300 billion as well, which is much more than the market cap of many of those listed companies in India and abroad as well. So, yes, the run-up has been quite huge, and that is a market share on your screens right now. So even with the run-up, 60% of all of the global market share belongs to Bitcoin. Ethereum is a second with 14% of market share. And of course, then you have all of those uh, altcoins coming in. And there are nearly 160 altcoins in the market, and nearly 12% of market share goes for that as well. So that, that really is how the world is trading. So Bitcoin, of course, continues to rein in quite on the higher side there. In the Indian markets, then, you have 15 major exchanges here. 
we have been talking to many of these exchanges and we understand that nearly 5 to 8000 users are registering every day on all of these exchanges and more than 1000 bitcoins are traded in india on a daily basis uh, you know the valuation of that really comes in between 70 to 100 crores on a daily basis here and the whole idea is that there are only 21 million bitcoins that can be mined and 16.7 million bitcoins are already in circulation so while clearly the supply is quite capped the demand is not and you are seeing demand increasing every day and that is what is taking the prices on the higher side as well there are some concerns too you have the password if you lose it once then it is irrecoverable uh, in sense of your bitcoins they are lost forever and the other thing is they of course can be hacked so you really have to choose uh, your uh, it, you know exchange on where you want to trade the market cap the performance etc before you go into buy and sell there there also is the regulatory stand. Various countries have been going back and forth on that. But when it comes to RBI, they are very clear that if you are trading, buying, selling, investing in Bitcoins or any form of cryptocurrencies, uh, as of now, it is not regulated and you are doing it at your own risk. Well, that is a journey so far and you clearly have seen a huge run-up, especially coming for 2017 itself. From $1,000 in, in January, we are holding around 11000 at this point in time. And the number of investors also has been increasing. And even as we sit at such huge valuations, the expectation is that going forward in the next year as well, it is only expected to grow from here on. Right, Manisha. Thanks so much for joining us uh, with all the details from there. And we are completely out of time on the show, so we're going to wrap up this edition of Reporter's Diary while all of us wrap our heads around those mind-boggling Bitcoin numbers. Thank you for watching, but do stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Coming up next is a special edition of Indianomics, the new reality for depositors.